Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the AAS YouTube channel. And this is part of the good stuff. This is the AAS Journal Author Series. And I'm very happy to have Peter Hoppe with us today. Hi, Peter. Hi, Frank. Where are, what's your geolocation? Where are you at? I'm in Mainz in Germany. Yeah, it's eight o'clock in the morning or 8.30 now. So. Very good. It is uh, June 22nd, my time. It's 11 p.m. my time. And we uh, both of us just went through solstice uh, um, a day or so ago. So how is uh, how is summer in Mainz? Are we sunny and nice? Are the beer gardens flowing or how's it going? Well, these days it's not that warm. We have around uh, 20 degrees C. So it's uh, around 70 Fahrenheit, yeah. So for German standards, this is okay. But I think for Arizona standards, this is like a winter or not. I, I would have to put on my winter coat for that kind of weather. <laughs> um, let's see, this past week, the, the power switch got hit. So we were up around, oh, 43, 44C, uh, about 115F. Uh, and okay. it, was, it was good and toasty, uh, a little mm. humid. Because uh, uh, the wet season in Arizona is actually July, June, July, August is when we get our rains. And so it drives the humidity up a little bit um, to go with the heat. So it's just really lovely. Um, <laughs> so actually, I would probably look forward to being in Germany right now to uh, to cool off a little bit. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. So, Peter, what do you like to do for research? So my uh, research focus is on uh, meteorites and in particular on uh, so-called pre-solar grains. Mm -hmm. So uh, as the name implies, pre-solar grains are older than our solar system. And uh, they are found in uh, small uh, quantities in primitive uh, meteorites. Mm -hmm. And they represent a sample of uh, stardust, which can be analyzed in terrestrial laboratories. Cool. And these grains are characterized by large isotopic abundance anomalies which are the fingerprints of uh, stellar nucleosynthesis and the galactic chemical evolution. Very cool, yeah. very cool. And that is gonna bring us to this. Well, I'll have to do that. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, that'll bring us to this very lovely APJ article on isotope systematics of presolar silicate grains new insights from magnesium and silicon. And Peter, take us away. OK, so let me start. So what have we done? So we uh, measured more than 100 uh, pre-solar silicate dust grains for their isotopic compositions of uh, oxygen, magnesium, and silicon. OK. And in the, in the first step, uh, these grains were identified uh, because they are uh, or they have uh, large uh, oxygen isotopic anomalies. So they were identified by ion imaging with the nanosims uh, ion probe in meteoritic uh, thin sections. Okay. Nan nanosims uh, is based on the uh, secondary ion mass spectrometry technique. It's a technique which permits isotope measurements uh, with a high spatial resolution, in this case of uh, better than 100 uh, nanometers. And in the second step, uh, after we identified these pre-solar silicate grains, we measured their magnesium and uh, silicon isotopic compositions. And this was made possible due to new technolo uh, te technological uh, developments, which were uh, uh, available since two years or so. OK, so let me start uh, with uh, the oxygen isotopic compositions. And maybe we can move to figure two on uh, page seven. Figure two. Nice big table there. Figure one, figure two, the oxygen compositions. And I'll blow this up. And there we go. Here we are. OK, so based on the oxygen isotopic compositions, Pre-solar oxygen uh, dust is divided into four distinct populations, which are indicated here by the ellipses. Uh, so most abundant are uh, group 
one grains, which make up about 80% of all grains. And these grains are characterized by enrichments in oxygen 17 and about solar or slightly lower than solar oxygen 18 to 16 ratios. And for a long time, these grains uh, were believed to come almost exclusively from low mass HEB stars. However, as you will hear in a minute, this view has changed a lot. Okay. <laughs> then there are the group two grains. Also, these grains show enrichments in oxygen 17, although not as high as the group one grains. Mm -hmm. And in addition, they are characterized by strong depletions in oxygen 18. And these grains uh, are believed to come either uh, from low mass HEB stars that experience cool bottom processing okay. or from intermediate mass uh, HEB stars that experience uh, hot bottom burning. Then there are the rare group three grains in the lower part of the plot. Yeah, these grains, or most of them, are characterized by enrichments in uh, oxygen 16. Yeah. And these grains are believed to come either from uh, uh, low mass HEB stars with lower than solar metallicity or some of them might also come from supernova explosions. Okay. And finally, there are the group four grains, yeah, which show enrichments in uh, oxygen 18. And most of these grains are believed to come from supernova explosions, and some might also come from higher uh, than solar metallicity AGB stars. Okay. So the goals of uh, this study presented here uh, uh, was twofold. Uh, first, to establish uh, systematics of pre-solar silicates uh, and that also magnesium isotopes are included. So not only oxygen isotopes, but also uh, magnesium isotopes. And this has changed uh, uh, our understanding of pre-solar uh, group one uh, silicate grains a lot. Okay. Yeah, and the second uh, goal was to uh, uh, identify imprints of galactic chemical evolution. Okay, so let me quickly or briefly uh, explain uh, the techniques that we uh, used, and maybe we can uh, uh, go to table one on page two. Indeed, big table. <clears throat> okay. Drop that a bit. Okay, there we go. Table one. Oh, sorry. Not table two. There are too many numbers in there. <laughs> <laughs> OK, table one. Sorry, there we go. Yeah, so we searched uh, for pre-solar uh, silicates by nanosims ion imaging, as I said before, in nine different meteorites. Mm -hmm. They are listed here. There are seven uh, carbonaceous chondrites and two ordinary chondrites in the lower part, Semacona and Krimka. And all these meteorites are very primitive, which okay. means you have a good chance to find uh, pre-solar grains. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we used ion imaging with the nanosims, and ion images are shown uh, in uh, figure one on page six. Yes. Yeah, okay. These are examples of, of ion image of ion images. You see this white outline there in in in, in the middle of, of, of the images. The left one shows a magnesium distribution. The field of view is uh, three by three square micrometers, mm -hmm. and the middle image shows the aluminum over magnesium uh, ratio. And uh, this is a 300 nanometer sized uh, silicate, uh, pre-solar silicate grain. And what is important here, these are not the isotopic anomalies which are shown here, which uh, are, are shown in different images. But what is important here is to show that these grains have low aluminum to magnesium ratios. And this makes interpre interpretations of magnesium isotopic ratios that uh, are measured for these grains much more straightforward because uh, contributions from the decay of radioactive aluminum 26 yeah. will be low to magnesium 26. So this makes the interpretation of magnesium isotopic ratios more straightforward and, and uh, easier. Right. Uh, 
And in total, as I said already in the beginning, we identified more than 100 pre-solar uh, silicate grains, uh, which have a size between 100 and 400 nanometers. Okay, mm -hmm. so then let's go to the results and let's start with uh, figure uh, two on page seven again, so which we showed before. Mm -hmm when I explained the uh, four oxygen isotope groups. So if you see over, overlaid on this plot are colored symbols. These are the data for the grains of this study. And as it can be seen, uh, our grains are a representative sample of, 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 uh, of oxygen rich dust, which was uh, uh, found already before. And the uh, different colors uh, show different subpopulations of, of uh, these uh, pre-solar oxygen uh, groups. So if we can jump to the, to the right to figure three. So this is a so-called magnesium-3 isotope plot. So for those of you which are not familiar with this notation, delta-25 magnesium means the deviation of the magnesium-25 over 24 ratio in per mil from the solar ratio. Yeah. And the same uh, below for the magnesium-26 over 24 ratio. And uh, shown here are the magnesium isotopic data for group one, oxygen group one grains. Mm -hmm. And uh, as it can be seen, we subdivided these grains into four subpopulations. Most abundant are the green ones, which we called normal grains. Mm -hmm. They line up along a line with slope of about one. And... Uh, okay. This, uh, yeah, okay, no, I come back to this, this later. So these are the, the major grains, the most of, 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 of the grains plot along this line. The second largest group are uh, the magnesium 25 rich grains shown in orange, which means they plot above uh, this line. And then there are two other groups uh, which plot below the uh, uh, line in blue and in red. These are called uh, magnesium 25 poor in red mm -hmm. and magnesium 26 uh, rich grains in blue. Good. Before I come to the interpretation of this data, let's have a look to the silicon uh, data, which are shown in figure five on uh, There we go. There is figure five, okay. And shown here are uh, the uh, silicon isotope data again in a silicon three isotope representation. So silicon 29 over 28 and silicon 30 over 28 ratios are given as per mil deviations from the solar uh, uh, ratios. And as it can be seen, all grains, including also grains from groups two uh, and four, are aligned along a line with slope of about 1.4, which is uh, quite interesting because a similar line was known from pre-solar silicon carbide grains. Yes. As you probably know, you worked on this as well many, many years ago with Don Clayton, if I remember correctly. You remember well. Okay, <laughs> so let's come uh, to, uh, to the discussion of these data and let's jump back to uh, figure uh, three on page seven, please. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start with the green ones, the normal ones. So as I said, or as you can see, they are aligned along a line with slope one. And this is best un, uh, interpreted, interpreted if these grains formed in low mass AGB stars, yeah, mm -hmm. in which uh, the magnesium would represent the galactic chemical evolution of the uh, magnesium isotopes. Because mm -hmm. according to models, magnesium is not expected to change significantly in low mass AGB stars. 
So uh, for magnesium, the best interpretation is that what we see here is the galactic chemical evolution of magnesium along a slope one line. And this is also compatible with predictions from galactic chemical evolution, which predict slopes around one. Okay. And yeah, then uh, yeah. if we can uh, quickly jump, uh, sorry for this, to uh, jump to figure six on page nine. It's all good. Figure six. And there we go. Bang, bang. Or oh, let's go first to figure five, sorry. Oh, good. Okay, figure five. Yeah, okay. So focus again on the green ones. As I said before, they are also aligned along a slope with 1.4, yeah? And this slope is already known from uh, silicon carbide brains, which was uh, uh, named the silicon carbide mainstream line. Uh, and it's uh, almost undisputed that this line represents the galactic chemical evolution of the silicon isotope. So this interpretation will also apply here to the uh, free solar silicate grains. Yeah. So the best fit line here is the red one, yeah, uh, which is slightly shifted to the left uh, compared to the silicon carbide mainstream line. And this can be well understood in the evolution of AGB stars because silicon carbide grains form later in the evolution than silicate grains, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then you can expect to have a, a small overprint of S-process nucleosynthesis. Mm -hmm. And this would mean enrichments in silicon 30, which means in this uh, plot here, shifts to the right, yeah? So this can be understood. So this is another uh, support that uh, uh, the uh, uh, silicon, here in the pre-solar silicates represent the galactic chemical evolution of the silicon isotopes along a slope 1.4 line, which is still not understood. Yeah. So if we can jump to figure six. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Uh, this combines the magnesium data, magnesium 25, and uh, the delta um, uh, silicon 29 data. And again, you see here uh, the green data points are aligned along a line with slope one here. Yeah. yeah. So uh, again, this gives more or further support that indeed what we see. Uh, in the magnesium and silicon isotopes in these normal oxygen group one grains is uh, galactic chemical evolution. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So if we jump to figure seven, we can have a look to the oxygen isotopic ratios. Okay. In particular, oxygen 18 to 16. Oops. Yeah. Yes. So oxygen, the oxygen 18 over 16 ratio is another indicator for galactic chemical evolution because in these uh, low mass AGB stars, oxygen 17 to 16 will change a lot during stellar evolution. However, the oxygen 18 over 16 ratio changes only a bit. Yes. And uh, therefore it's uh, the initial oxygen 18 over 16 ratio can be considered also a, a good measure for galactic chemical evolution. And we have uh, uh, calculated here the initial oxygen 18 over 16 ratio from the measured oxygen, oxygen 18 over 16 ratio in that we took the oxygen 17 over 16 ratio. From that, we calculated the mass of the parent stars. And from that, we back projected the measured oxygen 18 over 16 ratio to the uh, initial oxygen 18 over 16 ratios. Got it. Okay. You got it. Okay, good. So what we have plotted here are then delta magnesium 25 
as a function of the initial oxygen 18 over 16 ratios, which according to galactic chemical evolution models should be uh, should uh, show a positive uh, correlation. Along a line, which is shown here, uh, a dotted line, it's from your work, Timis et al, 1995. Yeah, so we have calculated this from this work. Mm -hmm. And as you see, okay, what we see is not a perfect correlation for the green uh, data points. However, a closer look makes things much better. There are two uh, grains in the upper left, yeah, which have a very low, in the upper left on the other side, oh, which, which have a very low oxygen 18 over 16 ratio around one times 10 to the minus three. And this is the limit between oxygen group one and oxygen isotope group two grains oh, and yeah. oxygen isotope two grains, oxygen isotope group two grains are expected to have experienced in their parent stars cool bottom processing or some hot bottom burning. So their oxygen 18 to 16 ratios may not be a good measure for galactic, uh, for the uh, initial oxygen 18 over 16 ratio in the way we inferred it here, yeah? Mm -hmm. So they might be much, much further to the uh, uh, right, yeah? So we, we should forget these two uh, grains. And also the two grains in the upper right, they have very high uh, magnesium 25 rich enrichment, which uh, suggests higher than solar metallicity stars or clearly higher than solar metallicity stars as parent stars. However, the initial oxygen 18 over 16 ratios we in, were inferred using models uh, uh, of HEB stars with about solar metallicity. So these initial uh, uh, ratios inferred here may be too low. Yeah, so they may be, uh, uh, or they should be shifted much further to the right. And if you consider this, yeah, it's still not a, a perfect correlation, but things get much, much better, yeah? So what we can say, yeah, there's a rough trend for Delta Magnesium 25 versus uh, initial oxygen 18 over 16 ratios. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, then let's come to the second largest group, the uh, magnesium 25 rich grain. So we should jump back to figure three on page seven. Okay, here we go. So, so the uh, 25 magnesium rich grains are shown in orange, yeah, which means they plot with more than three sigma significance above the galactic chemical evolution line. And as you can see, a lot of grains are uh, along a line, a trend line with slope of about four. Okay. So where could these grains come from? Uh, Low mass HEB stars can be excluded because as I explained before, in low mass HEB stars, magnesium is not expected to change a lot. Yeah. A second uh, possibility would be NOVA explosions because in fact, NOVA produce uh, magnesium 25 enrichments. However, mm -hmm. there are serious inconsistencies if we compare our magnesium, silicon and oxygen isotope data of these uh, grains with right. NOVA models. So yeah. Not a good uh, uh, choice, apparently. So however, supernovae are a good explanation for this, as I will show uh, in a minute. Yeah, because uh, specific supernova super, uh, models show strong enrichments and magnesium 25. And for grains with lower than uh, 300 per mil enrichments and magnesium 25, the, the, the lowest one on the trend line, also intermediate uh, 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 mass HEB stars uh, may be a, a possibility. Uh, and uh, yeah, I will show this in, in, in uh, uh, model predictions. So let's first come to a supernova. And for this, let's have a look to a model by Pignantari et al. Uh, on uh, figure eight on page 11. I think you are a co-author on this uh, 
specific model? Uh, I think I am. Yeah. So shown here are profiles of solar normalized isotope ratios, as you can see, oxygen and uh, magnesium in the interior of a 25 solar mass uh, type two supernovae, according to model 25 TH of Pinyantari et al. And this model is, uh, uh, is uh, special because it considers uh, hydrogen ingestion into the helium burning a shell before the explosion of this uh, star. Okay. And during the explosion, there's explosive hydrogen and helium burning in the helium burning shell, especially at the bottom of the helium burning shell. Mm -hmm. And this leads to the formation of a zone called oxygen nova in the lower left part in the left pa uh, part of this plot. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, in this uh, part of, of uh, the supernova, you expect strong enrichments and magnesium 25 and much smaller enrichments and magnesium 26. Mm -hmm. And if you mix matter from this zone with matter from overlying zones and with matter from the pre-supernova uh, uh, wind, you find very good agreements with the data of our uh, 25 magnesium rich uh, silicate grains. Yeah, and this uh, can be seen if we jump to figure nine on page uh, 13. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so again, the magnesium three isotope plot with the data shown in gray and uh, mixtures of matter from uh, the supernova model that I just showed, model 25th, are shown as pink here. And you can see that we can well reproduce almost all uh, uh, of these magnesium 25 rich grains. Interesting. Okay. And as I, I mentioned, for uh, also uh, intermediate AGB stars, yeah, with higher than solar metallicity, these are indicated here as crosses. And uh, for grains with uh, smaller enrichments than magnesium 25. And you see, okay, for those grains, also these intermediate masters with uh, uh, higher than solar metallicities might be uh, a way uh, to account for these isotopic uh, signatures. Mm -hmm. And that's, these are alternative uh, sources. Yes. And in the upper part of the plot, you see three diamonds for massive AGB stars. Okay, in principle, they could account for the magnesium isotopic uh, ratios of these grains. However, there's a big problem with the oxygen isotopic ratios because mm -hmm. these uh, massive AGB stars are expected to show hot bottom burning, mm -hmm. which uh, destroys almost all of the oxygen 18. And this is not what we see in these grains. So the most likely sources are supernovae, probably for most of the grains and for some of the grains, also intermediate mass AGB stars with higher than solar metallicities. Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's jump to the remaining two groups, the magnesium 25 poor and magnesium 26 uh, uh, rich grains. So we don't have to jump back to figure three. I think we can stay here. So these are uh, uh, the grains in the lower part uh, of this plot, yeah. And again, low mass AGB stars cannot reach this area, yeah. Mm. Except <laughs> if you would have strong contributions from aluminum 26. Mm. But as I showed in the very beginning, our grains have relatively low aluminum concentrations, yeah. So, uh, that you have uh, a contribution of aluminum 26 to magnesium 26 is very unlikely. And this is illustrated in a figure, let me see, 11 on page 14. Uh, 
Okay, what is shown here is a big delta magnesium 26 as a function for the aluminum over magnesium ratio of these magnesium 25 poor and magnesium 26 rich grains. So this big delta means uh, the distance in magnesium 26 from the uh, galactic chemical evolution line, which is okay. assumed here to, to uh, represent the starting composition. So this would be the effect of aluminum 26 decay. Right. So we can, uh, uh, I have plotted here three lines yeah, in blue for different aluminum 26 over 27 ratios, which in fact, could account for the uh, shifts in delta magnesium 26 for given aluminum magnesium ratios as measured in the grains. However, the numbers range from 0.03 to one, which is very high, yeah, yeah. and way too high for uh, HEB stars. And this is illustrated in the figure to the right in figure 12, yeah where I've uh, plotted uh, model predictions from Caracas and Lugaro for aluminum 26 over 27 ratios as a function of the delta magnesium 25 mm -hmm. uh, values. And as you can see, if we stay in the range of delta 25 uh, as seen in the grains, so comparatively low, I mean, you see that the expected aluminum 26 over 27 ratios are at most a few times 10 to the minus three or in, in a few extreme cases, 10 to the minus three, but in any case lower that one would be needed to account for uh, the magnesium isotopic signatures uh, of these uh, magnesium 25 poor and magnesium 26 rich grains. Yep. yep. So, so let's jump back to figure nine. Uh, figure 11, no, which one was it? Figure seven, I think. Seven, okay. This one, no, figure nine, sorry. <laughs> no, I got it, figure nine. I'll do it, okay. Okay. Yeah, so how, so AGB stars can be excluded for these grains in the lower part of the spot. Mm -hmm. But again, supernovae come into play here, yeah. And uh, what are shown here are predictions uh, uh, for uh, the pre-supernova phase as solid lines, the three solid lines at the bottom are the predicted evolution of magnesium isotopic ratios in uh, the ejector of uh, massive pre-supernova stars, yeah? or in the winds of uh, oh. uh, pre-supernova stars. And you can see, okay, we can leave, at least reach this region of the three magnesium isotope plot. Okay. And, and the triangle shows uh, expected uh, uh, magnesium isotopic compositions. If you mix matter from the supernova explosions, namely from the envelope, only from the envelope, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, uh, mix this matter with uh, pre-supernova wind. And you see uh, it's almost the same, yeah. Okay. Results so uh, supernovae or pre-supernovae appear to be the most likely stellar sources of uh, of of these grains. Okay. So that's all about uh, group uh, one grains. I could quickly say something about the group four grains, oxygen uh, isotope group four grains to remember. Uh, these are the grains which show enrichments in oxygen 18, yeah? So we could jump back to figure three, just to, or figure two, yeah, figure two, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, group four. Yeah, you see the group four grains, okay. Yeah. These are the classical supernova grains, yeah? But as you have seen before, now there are much more supernova grains from group one, yeah, which add to the group four grains. So the total uh, number of or fraction of supernova grains now exceeds 30% of all uh, pre-solar silicates, yeah. So this is quite a lot, much more than what was uh, thought before, yeah. Indeed. So, but what can we say about, about these grains? What's about their magnesium isotopic compositions? And these are shown in figure four. Mm 
before the purples. Yeah, here we go. So you see uh, the purple colored symbols, yeah. So you see uh, four of the grains plot close to the galactic chemical evolution line. One is a bit above towards magnesium 25 rich uh, composition. However, overall, the anomalies are relatively uh, small, which suggests that in their parent uh, stars, in this case, supernovae, magnesium was not uh, changed a lot, yeah. As I uh, showed before in the models of P Pinantaria, the magnesium is changed a lot. So apparently here we have to uh, take into consideration a different type of supernovae. And here comes a, a model of Rauscher et al. 2002, a classical model for a type two supernovae into play. And this is shown in uh, a figure 13, so the last figure. Okay. And 12 and 13, 15 solar mass are from Russia at all. Yeah, so shown again here are solar normalized uh, uh, isotopic ratios of oxygen and magnesium in the interior of a 15 solar mass type 2 supernovae. Uh, Rauch et al. 2002. And to account for the uh, oxygen 18 rich composition of group four grains, it is generally assumed that you uh, need uh, contributions from the helium carbon zone. As you can see, the blue uh, profile here for the oxygen 18 mm -hmm. over 16 ratio, which is strongly enriched here. Yeah. yeah, that's where you get the oxygen 18 from. However, you also need some matter or, or most of the matter from the hydrogen burning uh, uh, shell in the uh, uh, right part of this plot, yeah. And uh, also some minor contributions from the other zone. But if you mix in, 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 in the right uh, proportions, yeah, you will find a good uh, match to the oxygen uh, uh, isotopic uh, ratios of group four grain and also uh, uh, for the magnesium and silicon isotopic ratios as measured here in our study. So apparently there are two types of supernovae which contributed uh, uh, those without hydrogen ingestions, but also those uh, with hydrogen ingestion mm -hmm. have contributed to the population of pre-solar silicate grains. Nice. Yeah, I think that's about what I can say about this paper. Very good. Um, Peter, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to walking us through your really lovely article. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you, um, where, where, do you think, uh, where do you think we go? Where does the community go, let's say, over the next five years or so? Are there, are there an additional uh, 10 meteorites that, that one could do these measurements on? Um, are there additional theoretical calculations that could be done? Um, just kind of just give it a future look. Where do we go? Yeah, I think uh, there are many aspects. Yeah? Uh, first of all, I mean, you can expand uh, the uh, experimental studies, the isotope uh, measurements and uh, extend it, for example, to other di diagnostic elements, like iron, for example. Iron is another major element of uh, silicates, yeah? So it would be very interesting how iron looks like. Mm -hmm. And in particular, yeah, what uh, this means for galactic chemical evolution of iron isotopes, or what it means for the magnesium-25 rich grains. Uh, how does iron uh, looks like in these grains, yeah? And of course, I think Marco Pignantari, he likes to collaborate with us a lot, yeah? And he can develop his uh, uh, models further, I think. He's, he's using our data, yeah, as input for these models. And yeah, hopefully we can provide more and important input for these supernova models. Super. But also it's interesting to see other elements with respect to galactic chemical evolution, yeah? Yeah. I yeah. mean, iron is one element which could be measured. Calcium is another element which, which in some uh, uh, silicates could be abundant, so abundant enough to have precise enough isotope data. Yeah. So uh, there, these cool. are uh, the most important uh, uh, outlooks for the next years, I would say. 
Very good, very good. Future's bright, so to speak. Lots of lots of elements to look at here. Very nice. All right, Peter, thank you again. And thank you, everyone. And we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.